We covered the steamies, and we covered the diesel. Looks like everything is wrapping up. Hey, wait a minute. Who are those two engines up ahead? Uh-oh. Here comes trouble. Thomas and his friends have been made available in many different sizes and scales. Electric models of the characters have been produced by many companies for different gauges. Some companies span different gauges, but only one company produces Thomas for the O-Scale world. Welcome everyone to a review of Lionel's infamous and entire Thomas and Friends range. Six engines, six reviews, let's get this show on the road. Hi everyone, Thomas DOTD here back again with another review. Yes, believe it or not, we aren't done with the series just yet. Today we are taking a look at the absolute rarest Lion Chief Thomas and Friends engines, Iron Airy and Iron Bert. Here's some background before we begin. Everyone knows Lionel made Thomas, Percy, and James. Not as many people know they made Diesel. A very few majority know they also made Airy and Bert. Then, all six engines were discontinued. All the engines were then reintroduced with the new Lion Chief technology back in either 2013 or 2014. Thomas was a big seller, Percy and James got new faces, and Diesel was the second best seller next to Thomas himself. Then, randomly, silently, and without telling anyone, Ari and Bert were reintroduced with Lion Chief controllers in 2016 and then quickly discontinued a few months after. These models were only on the market for a very brief time, even more brief than the original conventional control run. Hardly anybody knows that these two engines exist, and let me say, I am absolutely stoked to be here presenting them to you. Now let's get into the review. Iron Airy and Iron Burt were never sold in a starter set. These were engines you had to buy individually. With the two diesels side by side, you can see that these two are certainly twins. These characters don't actually have their names printed anywhere on their bodies, just like in the TV show. But luckily, their names are printed on their chassis. To be honest, even I couldn't tell the difference for a while, but I eventually began to tell the difference by remembering this quote. Bert has the beard. Once you remember that little detail, you'll remember who is who. Looking over the units, their paint jobs are actually very well done, with their ironworks lettering applied excellently, just like in the TV show. Both units are a dark green color with yellow cabs. I have to say, the hazard stripe detailing on the front looks like it was applied flawlessly. This is some really crisp paintwork. The two units have open cab windows and excellent rivet detailing as well. I think my favorite thing about these new releases are their faces. As someone who owned the original conventional control Aryan Bird at one point, these faces are much, much better. The original models basically had the exact same faces with some minor differences. But these new faces show some real emotion. Iron Ari looks mischievous, and Iron Bert looks stern. But uh, looking at these two models for a moment, do you notice anything about them? Well, these two are Class 08 diesel shunters just like Diesel, so they are bound to look similar. But when I place these two alongside my Lion Chief Diesel, <laughs> look at that! These are just repaints of the Lion Chief Diesel model. Now, don't get me wrong, the Iron Twins do look a lot like Diesel, being the same class and all, but if you look at the TV show, the two Diesels don't have ladders like Diesel does. I'm honestly shocked that Lionel could not remove this little detail just to make the characters look that much more accurate. And because they share the same design as Diesel, that means they share the same design flaws as him as well. Just like Diesel, Iron Ari and Iron Bert's eyes are placed a little too far back. This is because the eye mix sits behind the body shell rather than sticking out into the face. With Diesel it looked strange, but fine because you could see the black surrounding the eyes, but with the Iron Twins, it just looks awful. You can see the yellow plastic around the eyes, and it looks even more strange than Diesel's model. And sadly, even though they had the chance to fix their Diesel model, they still won't give these two engines external side rods. I have to say, that's a real letdown. But proportionally and detail-wise, these engines do look really nice and have a very striking and eye-catching color palette. 
With all of that out of the way, let's place the Iron Twins on the track. But this lot of troublemakers won't be going anywhere without these. These are the Lion Chief remote controllers for both units. Iron Ares is painted dark green, and Iron Burks is painted yellow. These remotes take three AAA batteries. All you have to do is take off the back, plop in the batteries, close it back up, and flip the switch on the side. Once you turn the controllers on, you'll see a red light appear on the top. This means your engines are now connected to the wireless signal. You'll also hear Ari and Bert making idle diesel engine sounds real engines do. Now let's get the twins to work. So all in all, what can I say about Lionel's Iron Twins? Well. Perhaps there is a reason these were released randomly and then quickly discontinued. While they are certainly quality and have metal couplers and look really nice, they are essentially repaints. And while these two may have made sense being released back in the late 2000s, considering there were only a few Class 08s in the Thomas and Friends show, releasing them now is a little strange. Once Thomas went CGI, Ari and Bert were not featured as often as they used to be. Iron Ari and Iron Bert did not sell well to begin with in their original release, but being re-released in 2016 at 140 bucks a pop? Any kid would rather choose James or Thomas than these two, and you had to buy these two separately, you couldn't buy them together. That's a combined price of $280, nearly $300. Luckily, I didn't pay that much at all for these two, but still. But don't get me wrong, these two do run well and are nice, but they aren't essential. Unless you really like these two characters, or just like collecting the whole Lionel range, well, to put it bluntly, these two are known for causing trouble, so don't trouble yourself buying them. What a way to end your Thomas and Friends range, Lionel. And yes, that's true. This is truly the end. I have officially covered every single engine in Lionel's Thomas and Friends range. Six engines, six reviews. Now, I know there are some things I haven't covered, such as Rolling Stock, the Celebration Thomas, and I only briefly talked about the Christmas Thomas, but those do not really require any reviewing. If you don't mind, I'd like to reflect for a moment. I got into Lionel because one day, many years ago, I found my grandfather's old Lionel collection. I had some HO engines and stuff, but I really wanted to work in O-Gage because I wanted to use what was once my grandfather's. Go back a few years, I spent an entire summer cleaning, scrubbing, and fixing all his old, rusted track. And it was not easy. In fact, more than half of his track remains uncleaned just because it's such a hard and messy job. <laughs> like, look at this. He had this original Lionel turbine engine and a neat vintage diesel. These two engines are very collectible, and I can't believe I'm able to hold them in my hands. Once I got some of the old track working and got the diesel working, I knew this is what I liked. Instantly, then and there, I knew this would be the start of a wonderful hobby. I got into trains from a young age through Thomas the Tank Engine, so I wanted to own a Lionel Thomas so I could have a bit of my childhood on the tracks in a way. Kind of show my grandfather and myself side by side. But as I began to buy more for the layouts, such as new transformers, new rolling stock, and buildings, I wanted to grab the rest of the Thomas range. Because they all kind of felt like a family, in a way. I bought them all in 2014 and then sold them all in 2016 as I wanted to take modeling more seriously. But once they were all gone, I realized something. 
You don't have to take things seriously all the time. The hobby of model railroading is what you make of it. You can have fun with it, or be super realistic. You can be small, or big. You can have sounds, or no sounds at all. Your model railroad can be the things that make you happy. And so, <laughs> I decided I would re-buy all of them. Except this time, in Lion Chief. Because Lion Chief was the most recent, most up-to-date versions of the models. I not only wanted to have them back for myself, but so that I could produce honest and fair reviews of the models for the online world. As frankly, the Lionel models have always been seen as garbage compared to the H.O. Thomas series. I started in November of 2017, when I first purchased Thomas. And now, here we are in 2019, with Aryan Bird. It has been a ridiculously hard time trying to find the Lion Chief models, as they had all been discontinued by the time I wanted to start my reviews. But you know what? I didn't mind. Because I wanted to share with all of you just what exactly these models were. I wanted to review the most up-to-date versions so potential buyers knew exactly what they were getting into. I wanted to show the people who mocked Lionel just what exactly they were missing. It was difficult. And expensive. But it was also a lot of fun. Finding a new train store just to find James was great. Randomly stumbling upon Percy at a train show was a great surprise. Getting Diesel for Christmas was amazing. And getting the two rarest Lion Chief Thomas engines ever was insane. But I did it. And you know, these engines may look a little strange, and sure, they have their inaccuracies, but now that I sit here with this family of six once again, I feel like I've been reunited with the family. The Lionel engines are what I'm known for, to be honest. The Lionel engines brought me closer to my grandfather. They found me a hobby. They found me a YouTube channel. They even found a way to get me working for the official Thomas & Friends brand for a short time on the TCC. Like, look, you can even see my original Aryan Burt models in this Christmas scene. You don't always have to take things seriously. Just have fun with it. Do what you like to do. I think that is what this hobby is all about. Rekindling memories and having fun. That's the root of it, I believe. My goal with this review series was to show the world an often criticized and glanced over range of some truly unique locomotives. I wanted to show you all the pros, all the cons, and give honest and insightful reviews because not a single other person has done so with these engines on the internet besides with the Thomas unit. I hope, in some way, I have entertained you all, and intrigued you all. And would you look at this, Thomas, Percy, James, and Diesel, for the first time since 2016, are now back on the market with the new Bluetooth Lionel technology. No longer will these characters be rare. In a few weeks to a few months, these guys will be sitting on store shelves waiting to be loved by a new generation of model railroaders. So. I sincerely hope that my reviews have opened a few eyes and, perhaps in some way, made you all think twice about passing by the Lionel models when you're at a train store. If my reviews in some way actually help to get some new people into O-Gage, then I don't know what more I could ask for. Me personally, <laughs> I don't think I'll be reviewing the Bluetooth engines. I just spent three years trying to get these guys. <laughs> They're like a family to me. But now... I think it's time I take a look at the G-Scale engines. So everyone, old subscribers, new subscribers, fans, random viewers, Thomas fans, or modelers, thank you for joining me on this ride. This has been Thomas DOTD, and I hope to see you all again very soon.
This is the new. <laughs> that is the old. Look how far we've come, or what would you say? A diagonal step. <laughs>